All right, so in this problem, I have two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. So I'm gonna first start by rewriting 20 as 19 plus one. So now I have two to the power of 19 plus one minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So in this case, I have two to the power of 19 plus one, and this is gonna equal two to the power of 19 times two to the power of one. Now I have this minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now from here, if I factor out two to the power of 19 from my left-hand side, I get two to the power of 19 times two to the power of one minus one is equal to 16 to the power of x. And two to the power of one minus one, that's simply equal to one. And anything times one is itself. So I have two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, 16, that's the same thing as two to the power of four. So now I have two to the power of 19 is equal to two to the power of four to the power of x. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So two to the power of four to the power of x, that's gonna equal two to the power of four times x, which is also two to the power of four x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, 19 is equal to four x. Now we have a simple equation here. All I have to do is divide both sides by four and I get x is equal to 19 over four. Now to check, my original equation was two to the power of 20 minus two to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of x. Now, 2 to the power of 20 minus 2 to the power of 19, we already know that's 2 to the power of 19. So we get 2 to the power of 19 is equal to 16 to the power of 19 over 4. Now 16, that's the same thing as 2 to the power of 4. So now I have 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 19 over 4. And these two 4s cancel out, so I get 2 to the power of 19 is equal to 2 to the power of 19. All right, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 333. So, the first thing I'm going to do is factor out 3 to the power of x from my left-hand side. So now I have 3 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 333. Now for, I'm going to solve what's in my parentheses. So I have 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's equal to 3. So now I get 3 to the power of x times 3 is equal to 333. Now we want to isolate 3 to the power of x here. And the way to do that is to get rid of this times 3. So I'm going to get rid of this times 3 by moving it to the right-hand side. And I'm going to do that by dividing both sides by 3. So now I get 3 to the power of x times, or sorry, 3 to the power of x is equal to 111. Now, if I take the log on both sides, I get log 3 to the power of x is equal to log 111. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent of b to the front. So it's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 3 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So I get x times log 3 is equal to log 
111. Now if I divide both sides by log 3, these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to log 111 over log 3. Now, I can write my solution in two ways. The first of which is to actually divide log 111 by log 3. So log 111 divided by log 3, this is equal to 4.29. So this is one way I can write my solution. Now another way I can do this is if I have something in the form log A over log B, this is going to equal log base b of a. So this is another way of writing my solution. All right, so in this problem, I have 3 to the power of x times 5 to the power of x squared is equal to 15. So to solve this, I'm going to first start by rewriting 15 as 3 times 5. So now I have 3 to the power of x times 5x squared, 5 to the power of x squared is equal to 3 times 5. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to the power of x, as well as 5. So then, for my left-hand side, both the 3 to the power of x's cancel out. For my right-hand side, both the 5's cancel out. So now I get 5 to the power of x squared over 5 is equal to 3 over 3 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form 1 over a, this is the same thing as a to the power of negative 1. So 5 to the power of x squared over 5, that's the same thing as 5 to the power of x squared times 5 to the power of negative 1. And now this is equal to 3 times 3 to the power of negative x. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So, in this case, I get 5 to the power of x squared minus 1. And now this is equal to 3 to the power of 1 minus x. Now, if I take the log on both sides, I get log 5 to the power of x squared minus 1 is equal to log 3 to the power of 1 minus x. And if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this exponent and b to the front, so it's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I get x squared minus 1 times log 5 is equal to 1 minus x times log 3. And now, I'm going to take base 5 on both sides of both logs. So these cancel out to get 1. So now I have x squared minus 1 is equal to 1 minus x times log base 5 of 3. And this means that x squared minus 1 plus x minus 1 times log base 5 of 3 is equal to 0. And this gets me to x minus 1 times x plus 1 plus log base 5 of 3 is equal to 0. Meaning, this is one equation, x minus 1 equals 0, meaning x is equal to 1. And If you solve this, you get x is equal to negative log base 5 of 15. 